Hello, I'm John Eldridge, and welcome to the Ransomed Heart audio podcast. For more information on Ransomed Heart Ministries, our resources and events, please visit us online at www.ransomedheart.com. So Stacy posted a blog on her Facebook page uh, about Valentine's Day. And, uh, you know, it was a winsome, you know, hey, fellas, here's a couple thoughts. Hey, gals, here's a couple thoughts. I mean, just a very kind, you know, light but insightful blog, I thought. And uh, some of the feedback, I mean, people just, bam, immediately responded. And one guy responds, you know, loving a woman on Valentine's Day, what about loving a man? Hey, what's with that? How come you're not thinking about ways to show us appreciation? I was pretty shocked. Hmm. Not just, I shouldn't be shocked by sin. But what I was shocked by was the lack of self-perception of, do you realize, one, you're embarrassing yourself publicly, sir, as you post this? Everyone who's reading this is going, Gad Sooks, you know? Whoa. But even more, I just want to say, wow, like, like, where does relationship, where does relating well fit into your worldview? I mean, you're about truth and you're about setting Stacy straight and you're about, I don't know, gender equivalency or something, you know, mm-hmm. fair's fair. I don't even know what the motive was, but, but I just want to pause and go, do you realize that the way you are relating is doing damage? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's embarrassing to you. It's embarrassing to the male part of the species. You uh-huh. know? Friends, welcome to the Ransomed Heart podcast. We're jumping into a conversation today about loving, mm. relating. In fact, we're starting a series with this podcast on relationships, relating on love. And this was Craig's suggestion, and I think it's a home run. The verse that came to mind this morning maybe is kind of the the theme of what we're after is this in Philippians chapter 1, verse 9, Paul says, This is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, okay, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ. What I love, Craig, is, yes, love, but not just in a generic you know, blase, you know, kind of typical, yes, yes, oh, yes, right, I need to love. Paul's saying, look, you need to mature Mm -hmm. in your loving. You need to mature in your relating with knowledge and depth of insight. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that? Um, I'm just immediately flooded with um, what we call love that isn't. You know, love with depth of insight and true knowledge. I'm just thinking right now, a number of people recently I was with, and my posture was endure. (laughs) Endure, smile, make eye contact, nod my head, say something that proved I was engaged and and that would sound compassionately um, concerned about them. Mm. And I, I just don't think that's love. Mm. Craig, you said something a couple of years ago that just um, kind of blew me away and, and unnerved me a little bit, too. Um, you were talking to our team here, and you were saying that the best – help me with this – the best proof of our spiritual maturity is how we relate. Yes. Was that it? Yeah. Kind of the gist of it? Yeah. 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 I think uh, the proof of the work of God in our heart and life, the evidence of holiness, the best indicator of spiritual maturity is how we relate. Do we, in fact, love? That's huge, gang. Gang, I hope you hear at least the beginnings of the implications of that because that's not what we think. <laughs> You know, really, when you think, you know, who blows you away spiritually? 
let's just take that question. Who blows you away spiritually? You know, and you're thinking, wow, it's the people who are really walking in the spirit. They've got some gifting. They're an amazing teacher. Or, you know, they just constantly have words for people that are just, you know, out of straight from God. And, you know, are there people who have the gift of healing and yeah. they are literally healing the blind, you know, and that's what impresses us spiritually. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're suggesting that that's actually not mm -hmm. sure. the scriptural kind of barometer. That's not what we ought to be impressed by. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you just pretty much paraphrase first Corinthians 13, you know, moving mountains, doing all kinds of miracles. But if I don't have love, it, you know, profits nothing. It's just a clanging gong. I tell you, John, the thing that jumps out at me is when I see you or or someone else um, just being kind, immensely kind and forgiving and merciful to someone who just tried to take your head off or real aggressive or – I mean, it's it's that fruit. You often say this. You know them by their fruits. I mean, what's the preeminent fruit is – is love. I mean, to just unpack that a little bit, love that forgives, love your enemies, love that bears all things, believes all. I mean, you just look at love and you go, oh my gosh, who does that really? Right. Because we hear that verse in Corinthians. You, you, you were saying, you know, moving mountains and, and raising the dead and, yeah. and words of knowledge and understand all mysteries, but don't have love. We don't believe that. Mm-mm. We don't. What we are wowed by is the uber gifting, you know, the, the person that breaks into a word of knowledge, you know, or the person that raises the dead. And, and yeah, that's pretty impressive, gang. I get that. But Paul is saying, look, I know that's amazing stuff. In fact, it is a book on spiritual gifts, right? Corinthians mm -hmm. is, and among other things. And, and he's saying, look, I know that's all impressive. And I want you to pursue the gifts. That's all good. But gang, the best proof, the test of anyone's spiritual maturity is not their gifting. Mm -hmm. It's the quality of their relating. Mm -hmm. And again, not just a, not just a, a benevolent loving. Oh, right. they're just such a loving person. Paul says no with knowledge and with depth. Of insight, yes, you know, and and just two encounters just this last week, and in one encounter, a fairly belligerent person in the midst of a meeting, kind of taking control of the meeting, and they were about to really change the spirit, the mood, the direction, and and you know, part of me just said, oh, just overlook that, just don't. Another part of me says, no, like. Love does not ignore those things, nor do I let this person tank this meeting. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, offering some firm words in another direction and saying, actually, I, I don't agree with you on that, mm -hmm. that that can be loving, mm -hmm. you know, and, and yet in another scenario, here's just a very broken person that's, you know, going on and on and on about their brokenness and, and just to say, I understand. I understand. God is with you. Just a simple word of kindness. I mean, love looks different in different scenarios. So with knowledge and with depth of insight, not just a kind of generic loving. Yeah. And then, John, um, you know, I'm just thinking of this morning, uh, someone here on staff, uh, um, made a comment that um, wasn't very thoughtful or uh, sensitive. And I just immediately went to, there they go again. They always do that. I just, <laughs> I mean, it's like for this day, for this day, I just want to avoid that person. Yep. Just punish them. Yep. But then, you know, how about someone who's been abused or right. someone who's been betrayed on a deep level? They're cult to love. And I mean, I, I know little about this. Yes, yes, yes. So he, here's the mind blower, friends. Um, we are made in the image of God, mm -hmm. which means we're made in the image of love, right? I mean, God is love. And whoever loves lives in God and God in him, First John. Mm 
right? Whoever loves lives in God and God in him. We're made in the image of a relational God. And you look at the scriptures and, and you start thinking through all of the relational commands, right? Bear, mm-hmm. bear one another's burdens. Paul says, love one another sincerely from the heart, meaning no faking it, you know? Mm-hmm. All of the, you know, forgiving one another and, and exhorting one another. And, and then, you know, then at times Paul's really hard words to the church is mm-hmm. Jesus's really hard words yes. to the churches in Revelation, the uh, two and three, the, you know, words to the seven churches. I mean, loving, loving well, loving truly how you relate the quality of the relationship you offer is at the core of the scriptures, the core of the Christian life, the, the core of God. Mm-hmm. And can we just talk about the fruit of it? I mean, you want a great marriage? Mm-hmm. Learn to love. Mm-hmm. Like, you want a great family life? You want your kids to love being with you once they're adults and have their families? Well, what's the quality of the relationship you offer? You want a church that's flourishing? It's not going to be the gifts, gang. I've seen giftedness blow churches apart. It's the quality and the kind of relating that you are offering one another. Yeah, I think at the it's at the core of our desires too, John. I mean, what is it we most deeply long for? It's ultimately relationship with God, mm. relationship with others. Mm. I mean, mm. the context we were designed to live and function in is is one of Love, Mm. relationships. (laughs) Okay, I think that's fascinating. Something just fell off the shelf in here. It was an elk antler. And, (laughs) like, the enemy is not digging this here. Um, Right, right. It. can I just enjoy the earthquake for a minute? Yeah, I mean, you make a comment and the whole thing, the building falls apart. Yeah. It is our deepest longing. Gang, if, here's another way of getting into this, the introductory thoughts on this. Your greatest joys? Yes. Your greatest sorrows? Yes. You guys were asking me just this weekend, um, what recently, what's bringing me joy? I had just had to go back to Sam's wedding mm-hmm. and the family time around that. And I look at the greatest joys in my life and they are all relational in some way. Now, you know, it may have been, wow, this really great breakthrough, but that great breakthrough took place either with a person or in the context of people, right? Yeah. Or will affect relationships and in, yeah. in people. Yeah. yeah. And sorrows? Yes. Aren't all of our pains ultimately relational? Mm-hmm. Now, yes, there's a whole category like the chemo that you've just gone through, Craig, mm-hmm. the two years of hell of the whole cancer thing. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, there's sorrow in physically and there's sorrow and hardship financially. But I think the really worst ones, the most heart-piercing ones are the betrayals, the losses, the loneliness, right? The, the Yeah. And all those things, John, those betrayals and losses and Divorces and strained relationships, anger and un- issues of unforgiveness, I mean, they have an effect upon us and they just erode our own desire to mm-hmm. love, mm-hmm. to be loving. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it takes a toll on the very thing we were designed to be and do, and mm-hmm. that's to love. Mm. We don't believe this. We don't. We think that the greatest impact for the kingdom has something to do with either size Like, wow, you know, we have a huge church or, wow, we have a massive missions effort or, wow, we, you know, we're selling a lot of books or, wow, you know, 60,000 people came to this conference. That proves, right, we think it's that Mm -hmm. or we think that it's um, some incredible level of gifting of, wow, she is just an amazing teacher or, 
she's just an amazing counselor. I mean, just her gifting or, wow, he's so prophetic. He just, you know, he sees into the mysteries of God. And, and gang, this is the mind-blowing thing is that God doesn't think so. Yeah. Again, First Corinthians, like, yeah, you can have all that stuff, but love is actually greater than all of it. Mm-hmm. This is going to rearrange, I think, our categories mm-hmm. in some really great ways. And so maybe that's just our introductory thought that um, the quality of the relationship you offer and therefore, you know, your community offers, your church offers, et cetera, the quality of the relationship you offer is actually the truest test of your spiritual maturity your knowledge of Jesus, your walk with God, all of it. And um, where we're going to go in this series, just to kind of give you some things here, you know, we're going to talk about um, how do we harm one another? What gets in the way of loving? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about loving different kinds of people, loving fools, loving sinners, loving enemies, loving evil people. And we're going to move through some different categories over the next uh, several podcasts in this series. But I think this sets, at least helps you understand our heart and why we're going, the direction we're going. It's mm-hmm. it's kind of a big deal. Maybe a question uh, for those of you listening to consider is, um, um, how would those around you, those who know you, describe you? Would they describe you as a lover, as a loving person? Um, how do you think of yourself when it comes to loving others. Where does this take you? If people were to spend a nine-hour car ride with you, what would the effect on them be? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Over that, you know, forced intimacy for nine hours, what is the quality of the relating that we are offering one another? Mm. It's good. So, friends, um, part one in a series on relating, relationships, loving. You've been listening to the Ransom Tar Podcast. I'm John Eldridge, and with me, Craig McConnell. If you'd like more on our ministry, you can come to our Facebook page or to ransomedheart.com. And we really look forward to sharing this series with you.